I wanted to do something completely different. I wanted to do something that would let some of the children see that everything they're learning is linked. Eleanor Wilkinson is a maths teacher from Sussex with big plans for a cross-curricular space and rocket week. It hadn't been done before, but it seemed like a sensible thing to have a go at. And if we don't try these cross-curricular activities, how do we know if they're going to work? But can she convince her colleagues? When I knew that Space and Rocket Week was on, I thought, oh, crikey, how can I do Space and Rocket Week? And inspire students to see links between subjects. At St Paul's Catholic College in Burgess Hill, they're launching an experiment in cross-curricular learning. We've tried some cross-curricular projects through things like our sports specialist, and we're a specialist sports college and that's been quite effective between PE and science as an example. But we thought this was a unique opportunity to actually push that further and to develop that across all subject areas. For four days, Year 8s will be learning about space and rockets in subjects as diverse as art and maths. With an emphasis on teamwork and independent learning, how will the experiment go down with pupils and staff? I should just leave them to it. So it's all about them on a voyage of discovery. Space and Rocket Week blasts off with the first lesson, maths. Your mission is to design and build and launch a rocket. And apart from that, I'm not going to tell you anything. The whole of Year 8 has been divided into groups and have been given inspirational team names like Motivation or Integrity. And in Debbie's classroom, Team Endurance. They're given detailed instructions telling them the bottles will fly by being partly filled with water and pumped full of air. The main task, as far as the maths is concerned, is to manage their million pound budget. You are buying a rocket for £2,000 and you've signed it. Fantastic. Thank you very much. There you go. They had to um, buy the equipment that they needed in order to make a rocket that could be launched. So they had to buy a pop bottle and any card, any um, decoration, tape, glue, scissors, any equipment they needed to manufacture this rocket and they had to um, produce a budget and stick to it. Mimi. Ask, the, ask MESS, like a NASA consultation, what um, the essentials are on the list, because that would be easier than figuring it out ourselves. Yeah, what we're going to ask them? Yeah, only £3,000. We're planning to waste money on colours. Oh, you're planning to waste money on questions? That's not wasting money, though. They can ask me questions, but if they do, they have to pay £3,000 for a consultation fee. Which is quite difficult, actually, because I'm so used to always answering questions. OK. What would you like to ask? What the well, essentials. The essentials, what are the essentials? Essentials, right. To give you... That's a sort of big question. It's still okay. one question, though. It is one question, but it requires lots of answers. So I would say I will give you a semi-answer and then you can think about whether you want to extend your questioning, OK? So I would suggest that you might need cardboard to make some sort of fins from. Um, you will also definitely need some rocket fuel, which is water. Apart from that, I will speculate a bit more, but that would be another £3,000. So that is what I would say your basics One would be. <laughs> that is what you're Who works up. harder in the classroom? Is it the teacher or is it the learner? And for many years, in many successful schools, it's the teacher who's been working the hardest. And in fact, it changes our role and it enables the learners to take the lead there and for them to be committed to their own learning rather than us driving them through it the whole time. We can't have it big straight away, otherwise it just wastes money. It's not all about the essentials as well. Yes, it is all about the essentials. As soon as some of them see the group lists, they want to be opting out, they want to not be with that group, can, can I change? And it's very hard to impress on them, you cannot change your group, you've got to stick with the one that you've got. And we do have a policy here that you work with everybody and you respect everybody. We have six, uh, the large cardboard, please. Is, yep. is there pinkness? They're sort of peachy colours, brownie colours, and oh, blue and yellow. Lovely. So, which one would you like, Mimi? Sounds great. Unfortunately, no pink, so... 
This is slightly better quality cardboard than the rest. Oh, we'll have, we'll have that one then. Miss, no, we get blue. That's quite good quality. What? Good quality, good quality. OK, let me see your check, Aaron. Cardboard, 65,000. OK, there you go. Thank you. That's disgusting. The team don't really get going until the end of the first lesson, when one of the team members draws their attention to the details in the instructions. Because it's such a big notepad, we thought it was just filled with checks and stuff, so we didn't really bother reading it all, but then when John looked through it, there was, like, really important stuff, so we kind of had to read it all. On rocket checklist, fill names and see complete budget protection sheet. I think they found it very difficult to start with because they didn't quite know what to do or what they were supposed to be doing. But once they got the hang of what they were aiming for, um, they got on quite quickly. Aaron, all we've done is bought things, that's it. We've got to do it. We know what we're doing now. We just need to actually do it. Eleanor had a very special reason for choosing a space theme for the cross-curricular week. Last year, I was one of nine teachers selected from the UK to go to the Teacher's Space Camp, which is an educated space camp. What we had to do was we had to do some pretend missions, and some people were in the space station doing experiments. The picture there, I'm being Capcom, which is the person who has the joy of saying, welcome home, Discovery. That's the zero gravity chair. They spin you around in that for 45 seconds. The trouble is, being a maths teacher, I counted to 45 and I was in there a lot more than 45 seconds. I don't think I'd make a very good astronaut. Having been in Alabama for two weeks, I felt I ought to pay back, really. I went on the trip in June. I spent some time sort of sorting the resources into curriculum areas and realised that almost every curriculum area was covered. Staff mostly by October, November were saying, yeah, go for it. With the new national curriculum, creativity, diversity, cross-curricular, enterprise, group work, all these things are the key words of what we've got to include. So it seemed like a perfect opportunity to see if it would work. Okay, so that's £200,000 for one bossy. There you go. Competing against Team Endurance are Ashley, Mina, Elise and their team. Discovery. They're working down the corridor with maths teacher Jason Newland. I should just leave them to it. So it's all about them on a voyage of discovery. So they're trying to work it out for themselves rather than me telling them. Are we going to use masking tape or sellotape? Which one should you keep? Masking tape. They're the same. Masking tape. Use masking tape. Sometimes some of us aren't listening to others as much as we could do. What are we using? What are we using? Are uh, we going to put the mission pad like in the middle, like that, and then we're going to put the two wings at the side? Yeah. Because we were thinking yeah. a change to mask is usually boring, quite serious. So we're just kind of trying to have fun. I think partly because Eleanor, being a math teacher, was involved in the organisation of it, we were quite insistent that we didn't just want to do the adding up bits. We wanted to do the fun bits because there are lots of fun things in maths to do. We feel that students definitely lose some of the skills they have in independent learning and making links between subject areas that they have at primary school. With the new curriculum, we've got an opportunity really to push that and develop it and to, to avoid students compartmentalising their learning, um, making clear links across the curriculum. We're right in the middle of a textures project and trying to pack something else into an already busy syllabus is, is tough. But just with a bit of lateral thinking, I knew we could make a texture, so texture of the moon. Because I don't think rockets are very textured, so the moon was better. <laughs> it looks rather delicious and, and a little bit like porridge. This will be the texture and the colour for our moon. This is really horrible but very effective. Getting a lump of loo roll, mixing up our porridge. When we actually glue that down, we're starting to get something like a moon surface. The kids have done something which we can carry on building with. I can do something, something else with that. So using sand and string and glue to that large extent is not what I perhaps would have done in my initial planning. Who did you join up with? Well, that's quite a good top one there. Oh, there. I think for me it was fun. 
because um, I felt like I'd just got a little moment to, to go a bit crazy. It's the end of the day, and Eleanor and her colleagues in the maths department have grabbed a few minutes to discuss how the rocket building is going. And the other thing that we, I was thinking was about the questioning, because it was really interesting, because they, to, because they had to pay money to ask a question, it stopped them doing all of their, what do I write in this, how do I do, you know, all the stupid questions which they ask all the time, which was brilliant. Yeah. But it also, I think, stopped them asking questions that they should have asked. I mean, might maybe have, I don't know, four compulsory questions that they have to pay for, and they have to think about what's, you know, you have to pay this money, so what's it, what is it worth using your question on? Because you wouldn't normally go and build a rocket without asking NASA about it, would you? I mean, you know, <laughs> and, so, and they sort of tried to do that. said this, one small step for man, one oh. giant leap for mankind. Bessie! Oh. Neil Armstrong, nice one. Who's Neil Armstrong? Oh. Astronaut who was first on the moon. Fantastic. OK, so... It's Tuesday um, and Space and Rocket Week has gone back in time. Here's our first picture. Just have a look at what there is. Think about the atmosphere within space. In our class, we looked at whether the moon landings were a hoax. Um, whether, whether Apollo 11 actually landed on the moon or whether the US government actually made it up. Um, I don't know what it is or what it could prove, but there's something in the background yeah. to the left of him, like a sort of shadow. Oh, yeah. This thing? Yeah. yeah. Space and Rockies Week kind of brought it all to life because they knew about the moon, they knew about how the gravity and the water on the moon were pretty much non-existent. And without that, it would have been uh, it would have been pretty difficult to judge the reliability of these, these documents. Um, you know, the behind, it's really dark. Yeah. And apparently the dark side of the moon is like, it's minus something or other. Surely they would have come further away from the dark side of the moon. There's like no cord from the person, Neil Armstrong, to the spaceship. Yeah. Like, keep him on. And how'd the rocket stay on there? Excellent. That is a fantastic question, which hopefully... To actually have a week where you're not assessing them, it's not working towards a final grade, it's just doing it for the pure love of the subject has been brilliant. I think you're right, a very good year group to do it with because you can give them those skills which will really be useful for them and powerful for them as they go up through the school. They're not working for exams, they're not new into the school and we're always trying to look for things that encourage the year eights to work harder and aim for something. The more we can look at cross-curricular learning lower down in the school, the better. For Space and Rocket Week, the Design and Technology Department have asked the teams to design and build a Mars lander. One plastic cup, your egg, of course. They're working on structures which will land an egg safely when it's dropped off the school roof. Let's do it like that, and then, that and then elastic, band. elastic band around that. Yeah. Look as well. Right? Yeah, that looks all right. How are we going to put the balloon on? We're going to blow it up, and then tape it down. <laughs> <laughs> there are three parachutes. There's the balloon, the tissue paper, and the piece of paper. And then we have lots of cups and eggs and stuff in there to make all padded and marshmallows. But make eight her one. <laughs> the slower it descends, the more points you're going to get. If we can get the egg out at the end and it's intact nice and easily, three points. 